wide receivers, yeah, guys. Speaking of Mike's living, Marquise attack. Godwin back from the dead, essentially. Uh, wow. Jeez, Mike. What is I'm, going on here? Holy I'm cow. Stuck, really. He was, we didn't think he was going to play this year. We did He's not. Been upgraded. We, we were talking out our ass because we didn't really know. But Chris Godwin is back <laughs> from the dead, apparently, according to Mike. Jeez. Uh, uh, let it us, is, what does that mean? What is the, the, the let us, finger like that? Let, so let, explain that to let us all That's pray. the Austin Powers. Let us all Oh, pray. that's yeah. what it is? Hey, yeah. I let, think those movies all suck. Let's, Do you we like go, Austin Powers? Yeah, I used to think they was funny. We, 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 we're going to get back on track with this. Let's yeah. see. Yeah, Marquise Goodwin, shout out to him. I'm glad first, he's healthy. First and foremost, like shout out to him and, him and his family. Um, he came on the show. He had a great interview, uh, yeah. just, just what he does. But but I, I kind of reiterated it and kind of alluded to this earlier in the show. Deshaun Watson saying, oh, listen, we going. it's going to be fireworks, right? One of the things that we all felt was missing from this roster, and I still felt it as I watched Deshaun Watson this preseason, was the vertical threat. We talk about Anthony Schwartz not being able to make this team. He's cut. He was the guy with the speed. We talk about Jakeem Grant, who they were going to put on the team. We thought he was gone, but they were just keeping that's him. In, that's incredible, by the way, that's, that he comes back and his first play, he tears his knee yeah, again. I, I, and I know and I know that how sucks. disheartening that is. I saw my ACL uh, against, uh, we were playing Phillip Rivers at NC State. Yeah. Uh, and this is years ago, 2001 or something. I tear my ACL. I had surgery on it December 13th. And when you tear your ACL, you know you know exactly the day. It's like your children. You know when they're born. Yeah. I had surgery on this knee December 13th. And then I worked my way back all summer, stayed on campus. And then the week before we played Pittsburgh, I tore this ACL. Oh. Had my eight, eight, eight months later, tore my ACL. My left knee had surgery on August 24th. Oh. I say that to say this. Shout out to Jakeem Grant because I know how hard it is to work that way. Come back. It's just devastating that mentally. Sucks. But he was going to provide some speed on special teams. He's going to provide a punch, too, and he's out for the season. So now you're looking at an offense that is, yes, has some pieces of parts, but Amari Cooper's not a burner. Donovan Bruce Jones is not a burner. Elijah Moore, they want to use as a gadget guy or, or moving around, do some things. He's speedy, but he doesn't have that long speed like Marquise Goodwin. You go back to OTAs, they, you see the two deep balls that he completed, and he's a guy that can run and catch the football. This was huge news. But let me ask you this. Huge. You think he's going to be ready to play week one? I don't. I'm throwing, I, I'm throwing caution to the wind. Yeah. I he, think it's great that he's that yeah. he's activated. Yeah. And I think it's it's cool for us to look look at as fans and people who cover this team of the right. potential of the wide receiver room with him in it. But he's dealing with or coming off of blood clots in his lungs and in his legs. And those are two very serious areas to have blood clots. And so – you know, just to see him working his way back, it's like, okay, let's take baby steps with this. But I don't want to start imagining or pencing him in as a contributor immediately. Maybe after the first four, maybe after the bye week. Let's say they activated yeah, him, but maybe know. after the bye week, he can become a contributor. But I don't think that just because he's been activated, that now all of a sudden Deshaun Watson has that weapon disposable yeah, to him immediately. I guess we'll see. I mean... On one hand, I see what G sees because I'm like, well, it wasn't a muscle pull. It wasn't a strained calf. And the, so, doc the doctors aren't going to put him in harm's Right. They way. wouldn't have allowed him to be activated if, if, he yeah. was at, if they thought he was at risk. However, what kind, what's his conditioning right now? Has that, he been able to run? Has he been able to a big thing. do all those things? I don't know. It is two weeks till the start of the season, so it's possible he plays week one. I would think maybe he doesn't, but at some point, even if it's not week one, it was not he week does provide a potential threat that they don't really have. Even if it's, else. Say it's some, it takes him a month to get acclimated, yeah. to learn his playbook, all yeah. the, for, for what we're saying, he, he's been... I bet it doesn't take him that long. He's a savvy vet. He's been around he's forever. Been, and he's been he's at the been facility. Here, yeah. He's been in, in, in a room and doing his studying, so yeah. I think that won't be an issue. Even if it's take, he don't play to the third game, I yeah. still think that's a huge factor because that factor scares teams. It opens up the playbook. Now all the underneath stuff is happening. That's one of the, my big concerns going in to the to the season was when I saw that Schwartz got cut and I knew that Jakeem Grant had towards knee up. I'm like, yeah, they, that's the the missing piece to this offense. Guys, let's talk about the depth of the wide receiver group. We know. Or I assume Goodwin's going to be on the team, right? So we know that there's five spots definitely accounted for. If they only keep six, then the last spot will come down to David Bell and Austin. Why well, can't I think of Austin's first name? Watkins. Austin, 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 Austin oh, that, that is his first name, yeah. Austin Watkins. Uh, he did, Austin Watkins had a great start to the preseason, didn't really do much yesterday. In the end, 
I still think, even though it shouldn't, uh, the, the, the facts are that Austin Watkins never ran with the first team at all. Mm-hmm. Never. If they keep six wide receivers, I'll be very surprised if they keep Watkins over Bell. You may not like that because Watkins had a better preseason, but Bell's lined up with the first team some. Watkins has not. That tells you something. Now, maybe they'll keep seven receivers and they'll both be here, but I think they're more likely to keep six, and I don't think as good a preseason as he's had, I don't think Watkins is going to be on the team. I, I agree for the record. I don't. I disagree with that. I think that when I look at what David Bell did last year and when I look at what he's done this year, you can argue that Austin Watkins has made more of or just about the same amount with the opportunities given to him than David Bell has. Now, I do agree with the fact he's never ran with the ones. That was one of the things that I really wanted to see against Kansas City because I'm a guy who believes that Austin Watkins is going to make the team right. and possibly be a contributor. But if he factor. was going to make the team, and wouldn't so, they have given them those So it was like, okay, let's see him with the ones. And yeah. the fact that Kevin Stefanski didn't put him out there with the ones, it kind of raised some eyebrows, so to speak. But when I look at, you know, just the physique, just what I've seen from him in preseason this year, and I understand David Bell has made some plays as well, it's just – Something in my gut says he's the better player to keep at wide receiver six than David Bell. And I get it. David Bell was a draft pick last year. We all know how this organization rolls, right? They don't like to give up on guys that they drafted. And then people can point to, well, he won the award to be in the best receiver in the Big Ten. I call BS on that, right? Yeah, you did tell you he beat out Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. Yeah, cool. Oh, that's cool and all, but... He ain't even on that level. He the guy. But, when, but in so, the end, stop. whatever you think should happen, I, to me, in the end, I think the reality is when he didn't play with the ones, yeah. I don't think they look at him as a, a guy But, on the but team. you know what, Bull? I'll, I'll say this as well, and I, I've had some days to think on this. Regardless of who they keep as the six wide receiver, um, I don't think it's going to matter much, right? Because I think that you're going to see probably four to five of those wide receivers have an impact. And we keep forgetting the fact that, you know, these tight ends – is a part of the pass catching group as well. And these tight ends are going to be contributive factors. And I always go back to Jordan Akins, a guy that he played with in Houston, seems to be a guy that he has high chemistry with, and a guy that, along with David Njoku, should have a pretty good season. And so these guys are deaf guys in case somebody gets hurt. I don't look at them yeah. to, to be the contributing factors that I did. Maybe I was well, drinking the Kool Aid after, yeah. after the first couple, because uh, I was with Jay. Saying yeah. he might be wide receiver well, three. The, the reality I, is, I jumped out the jump with that one. Yeah, the reality is that he, whoever makes a team between Watkins and Bell, even if they both make it, mm-hmm. they're probably going to be inactive on game days. Yeah, because you're not having more than five wide receivers active. Yeah, especially with two or three tight ends. Right, and you know that if God, well, unless Godwin's not ready to go, then maybe one of them. But you know that Tillman, if they're healthy, Tillman and Godwin will be four and five yeah. and will be active on game day. I, I, Gee, my problem. My problem is, you know. It's a lot of political stuff that go on, right? You know, well, could, could you see Austin Watkins Jr. get cut this year? You could see that because here's the thing. They could be on the practice squad. I, he's not going to make the practice squad. He ain't making a practice squad. squad. He's Why? Not, he's too I gotta good. I got to imagine something. You don't think there's a guy on, on many other teams no, in the league that's not, that, are, that he, had 200 no, yards in the preseason? No, no, I'm going to look it up. No. It, listen, it don't even got to do with, with the yardage. It's, just, it's the types of catches he made. It. I've seen him make one-handed catches. I've seen him make back shoulder catches. I've seen him catch the ball and run. I've seen him go high point to football. He will not be on a practice squad. Somebody's going to grab this guy and put him. You know what I just playing. thought about? You know what's a team, and this team is in our division. They uh, all play one more they game. All te- they always seem to go get wide receivers. They never really get wide receivers in the first round. They developed these wide receivers to be a ballers, and they've done so probably for the last 10 to 15 years, and I think it don't get talked about. You know what that is? The Pittsburgh Steelers. Can you imagine a team like that going to get – because I'm with Mike. Austin Watkins is not he making is it. Not, he's not. He's not making it to no practice squad. He's the only receiver that had 200 or more receivers. Yeah, but that's not fair because he's, he's played, they played four games. These other teams played three. I mean, he had one catch. Okay, he had one catch for 12 yards yesterday, so that kind of balances right. balance it yeah, out. Yeah, but – it yeah, one catch for 12 he yards. He played one more game. He had one more opportunity. You, you got to you you go yards right per game. In yards per game, he is fifth. He bought out. No, really fourth because the one guy only played one I game. I mean, that that's – but I'm not looking at just the stats. I'm looking at – I'm play. not convinced he's going to be playing. I, I just I'll, don't – I'm looking at can you play. My thing can is, play. can you come out and play? David Bell has has not outperformed him in any way, shape, or form in three years, two years. 
Not to, he, he's, he does not have the physical traits that he has. David Bell has not outplayed him. The, the, now, will the Browns keep him on the team because he's a third-round pick? There's a chance. You can look at the track record. They just cut Anthony Schwartz. And if you don't think this, when you're in a, in a, in a general manager's office, they got a big whiteboard, right? And they got where you was drafted and what year you was drafted. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at that big whiteboard, Anthony Schwartz, third-round pick, you just cut him this year, that means you miss. Jordan Elliott, third-round pick, he might not make the roster. That means you missed on that again. Uh, Phillips, he's been here four years. He's injured again. You missed on Stinks. that one. You, you, so keep going. Kate York. Kate York, I got a big decision to make on a fourth Man, round pick. Man, Didi really and is convinced you, he's staying. Hey, Demetri like Felton, you was a fifth round pick. Yeah. So you start adding these picks up, and these are all misses, 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 and it's close at the end of the year, and you may not have the year you want, you could possibly – be on the bubble. They may let Stefanski go and say, well, let me look at Andrew Barry. He did acquire this, this. But let me look at his drafts. Yeah. And if all his draft picks are getting shadow round, it does not look good that you yeah, missed true. on a fourth round pick that's fair. and an undrafted free that's agent right. beat him out. Now, you did bring in that undrafted free agent yes, too. Yes, yes. But in the end, I don't know, it, hopefully it doesn't matter who their sixth receiver is because yeah, hopefully if you stay healthy, that guy's not going to play much Hopefully, hopefully it don't even come down to that. Yeah, but yeah. you know, we've, we've done this. I mean, Amari Cooper, one. Donovan Peoples-Jones, two. Elijah Moore, three. Elijah Moore, three? I thought he was going to uh, have 1,500. No, I'm, I'm just, just, I'm just going to yeah. like yeah. Cedric Tillman. Yeah. We would say Mark Goodwin, five. So, yeah. I, I don't think the Browns keep more than, than six. Yeah, no. Like, I'm one of those Probably people not. that believe that you're gonna, they are going to keep three tight ends. They might not do a lot of 12, 13 personnel. Yeah. I still think you'll keep three tight ends. Most so, teams do. To me, six wide receivers, three tight ends, that's nine pass catchers. But, but Mikey, here's, here's my thing. I'm going to ask you this question. Yes. How is it that DTR can play so well that he becomes the second team quarterback but preseason don't count. But uh, he, but, but Watkins can play catching the football from DTR, but, and he, that don't count. Well, I would say, well, first of all, we don't know that it doesn't count, to be fair. Number two, the preseason games are part of the puzzle, right? Right. They're part of the puzzle, just like classroom, just like maybe DTR is fantastic in all the things we don't see, and maybe Watkins is just okay in the things we don't see. Maybe. I'm, I'm yeah, not saying that's the case. But, yeah. To your point, and this goes back to Earl, and I've seen a lot of people say they're going to keep seven receivers or think they should keep seven. First off, you only really have five active on any given game. Right. Day. So, so yeah. six and seven is kind of a luxury. And the six and seven you do have, they better be special teams aces. And I'm not sure we've seen Bell and or Watkins in particular play no. very much on special teams. So those guys very unlikely to get in the rotation, even if they do make the roster, if everyone's healthy. Godwin's health, obviously a concern, but if you're going to be a sixth or seventh, especially a seventh, you better be a special teams ace. And unless I'm missing something, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, I don't think Watkins no. has made an impact on special teams. I mean, I haven't seen him. I haven't seen teams. him on special no, teams. I haven't either. Yeah, I don't I think so either. either. Yeah. So that's why I lean towards Bell being the guy yeah, they we'll keep see. as opposed to Watkins. We'll see. I wouldn't be surprised, by the way, and I agree with Earl that they're going to keep three tight ends. I wouldn't be surprised if they ended up going out of the organization for another tight end. I wouldn't be surprised if they go out of the organization for another running back, even though they just did They're going to keep four, and we're going to get to that in a sec. Yeah. They're going to have four running backs on the 53-man roster. Why do you say that? I pretty confident in that. I don't, and me and Earl talked about this morning, so you want to just transition to the running backs? Yeah. Let's, let's, let's do this that. Going right. I got one more fast read. We'll talk a little running backs yeah. here. 